Hello, this is the first part in my series on the basics of bond valuation designed for undergraduate students enrolled in finance for the first time. So we're going to start with a quick overview of the characteristics of a bond. Now before now, we've already learned that to determine the value of any investments, we need three input variables, color coded here to reinforce concepts. And they include the expected cash flows from the investments, the investment period, or if you like, the maturity of the investments, and importantly, the required rate of return on that investment, aka the cost of capital. And uh, here are the notations that we're going to uh, be using. Uh, for these calculations. So armed with these three variables, we can calculate, for example, the uh, present value of that investment. All right. So in the case of a bond, though, there are a few specific characteristics we should want to know. So first, remember that a bond is a fixed income debt instrument. Uh, what this means is that it is a debt instrument that pays a fixed amount of interest each period. And so if um, you lend a hundred bucks at 5%, then every period uh, you're going to get 5% on a hundred, which is five bucks every period. The period could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it could be semi-annually, it could be annually. So now the debt itself has a phase value, also called maturity value, also called par value. All right, which as I write here is the principal amount that uh, the borrower uh, takes from you, uh, borrows from you, and promises to pay back at maturity. Now, the face value of a bond is generally defined to be a thousand bucks, although in reality it could be in multiples thereof. And so we're going to use FV to denote the face value of a bond, which, since it's going to be given back to you at maturity, also would represent the future value of that bond, since that's what you're going to get back upon maturity. The second is the fixed interest rate attached to that bond, which is what determines the fixed um, income that you receive from period to period. So for example, that fixed interest rate, which is called the coupon rate, could be, say, 8%. And so if you buy a bond with a coupon rate of 8%, then that means every year your coupon interest payment is going to be 8% of 1000 as I show right here, which comes out to be $80 per year or $40 every six months, which is typically the case because bonds, uh, for the most part, pay interest semi-annually. The final thing to note here is the yield to maturity on the bond, which actually is simply the market interest rate on that bond, what the interest rate is today. Uh, for the company or the organization or the government entity that's um, borrowing from you, that's selling the bond to you, that is, um, it represents the cost of that bond to them. So for example, it could be 7%. So in this example, I said, suppose the firm borrows $1,000 from you today. And let's say today, right now in the market, interest rate is 7%. That means that this 7% is going to be locked. It's going to be locked in as the coupon rate on this bond until the bond matures. And so um, what happens is upon maturity of the bond, um, you're going to, of course, get, let's get rid of this guy right here. You're going to get, um, of course, the... Uh, your $1,000 back, which is the maturity of the bond, the money that was borrowed from you at the outset. And of course, whatever um, interest payment that's left to make. Nevertheless, over the period of the bond, each day, market interest rates may change. Even though your coupon interest, which was locked in at the time you took out the loan, is locked until the bond matures. So now, I show you an example right here. I'm going to go to Bloomberg.com, and this is the current term structure of interest rates for the U.S. Treasury yields. And actually, this belongs in the period of the coronavirus infamy. So these are the trades for March 20, 2020, as you see right here. And from what you see right here, in this uh, yield, in this term structure of interest rates, you can see that three-month and six-month bonds actually have negative interest rates. So interest rates have dropped so low because um, of all the efforts to help stimulate the uh, the uh, failing economy. So anyhow, so what you're going to see here is the coupon. See, this is the coupon, and then this is the yield, and in between you see the price of the bond. So right here, 
for example, the two-year bond has a coupon interest rate of 1.13. So when this bond was originally issued, interest rate at that time was 1.13%. And so you're going to get paid 1.13% per year until this bond matures in two years. Meanwhile, right now in the market, new two-year bonds have a market interest rate of 0.31%. Regardless, the guy who purchased this bond at the time it was issued will continue to receive interest at 1.13% until it matures. But if you're buying it today, this is what's going to be locked in, 0.31%. Likewise, for the 10-year bond at the time of issue, the rate that was locked in was 1.5%. Right now, though, it's only 0.85%. So as you can see, for example, if you were the guy who purchased this bond at the time of issue, receiving 1.5% per year, and you're going to do so for the next 10 years, you are getting more interest than the guy who is buying it right now and who's going to get paid only 0.85% for the next 10 years. And so the, the bond that you currently have with a rate of 1.5% per annum is going to be considered a premium bond because you're getting paid more than what the current market interest rate um, is showing. And as a result, your bond is going to sell at a premium. In this example, 106.2% of the face value. So given the face value of $1,000, 106.2% of 1000 comes out to be $1,062. So as you can see, because you're getting paid a better rate, which was locked in at the time you purchased it, than what the rate is today, uh, your bond is viewed as a quote-unquote superior bond because you're, you're looking prettier. And the same applies to the 30-year bond with a coupon of 2%, of 2 but a yield to maturity, which is the current market interest rate of 1.42%. And so these concepts are summarized right here. So a premium bond is going to be a bond with a price above $1,000, meaning that the coupon interest rate applying to your bond is greater than the current market interest rate, which is called the yield to maturity. On the flip side, a discount bond is going to be one where the bond price is below $1,000, which would mean that the coupon interest rate applying to the bond that you possess is below the current market interest rate. And this is a wrap on this introduction.